Good day, welcome to Endurance Room. Hope you're doing well. Today we're gonna do a quick primer on land navigations, teaching us how to use our compass with our pace count to make our own maps. This is an incredibly powerful set of skills to have under your belt. It's well worth putting in the effort. It's not hard, there's just a couple things you need to know, like your pace count, and I'll show you how to calculate that today and then talk about how you can use a couple simple exercises to go from not knowing how to do this at all to making your own map. Welcome to Endurance Room. So the first thing we need to know is our pace count. And this is just simply the average of how many steps we're taking per 100 meters. I count every other step. So like every time I put my right foot down, which would look like one, two, and that was two paces. And that's just easier than one, two, three, four. You count too fast, the numbers get too big. So I count every other step or every time I put my right foot down. And to get your pace count, you just need to go out to an area where you have relatively flat open ground for 100 meters, have a starting point, some kind of marker like this tree. And I measured out 32.8 feet of paracord. 32.8 feet is 10 meters. I put a loop in both ends, put a stake down at the starting point and stretched it out 10 times to get the total 100 meters. I put a marker at the end, and then I used that to calculate the pace count. I did this there, got a number, did it back, got a second number, then I put my backpack on, and got a third and fourth number. I added up the total, then I repeated that whole thing on a hill, going up a hill and down a hill, both without the backpack and with the backpack. You add those total steps up with the total steps of the flat ground, then divide the whole thing by the total number of trips up and down, back and forth. So say eight times, and that will give you your average of walking with or without a backpack out in the woods on flat or uneven ground, walking up hills, walking down hills. All that stuff is gonna affect how many steps you're taking per 100 meters. So you wanna have a really good idea of the average. Okay, so after we get our pace count established, just get comfortable counting it. You know, walk around and count every time you put that right foot down or your left foot, whatever you want, you want to do, but every other foot. Just get used to counting to your pace count. Mine is 60 paces for 100 meters. I hit 60, you start over at one, and I'll throw it out like one finger. You know, that's 100 meters. I get to the second, I get to 200 meters, I'll drop another finger, and that'll just help me keep track of my distance. Either that, or I'll use my pacing beads. You've got nine beads on the bottom here for each 100 meters, and when you hit 900, you bring up one of the beads at the top, and that's one kilometer. Drop the nine back, and you start over, and you can use this to calculate large distances. So if you're at say like a state park and it's five miles from the parking lot to the campsite, you can basically just count your paces as you're moving along and keep track of how far you are on the trail. It's really not bad after you get used to doing it. It just becomes like second nature or background. And that lets you have a really good you know, perspective on your location, your whereabouts. But in a bushcraft or a survival situation, that lets you get even more detail by going beyond, you know, a commercial map to, you know, making your own. And to do that, we need to dive into the compass some. So check this out. Now that we know how far we're walking with our pace count and how to keep track of it with our pacing beads or our hands, next, let's look at the compass. 
I've got a Sunto A10 with me today, which is just a simple compass, but it's got 360 degrees of direction to work with and a rotating bezel ring. And the way you use this is pointed out at arm's length. So you're pointing the tip of that triangle out at an object out in the distance, say a tree, a rock, whatever. Point that and then you rotate the bezel ring until you put the red in the shed. You line the two red arrows up, which gives us 80 degrees northeast. That is your azimuth, your line of travel to your destination. Your way home is the back azimuth, and that is calculated by adding 180 degrees to the azimuth. So 180 plus 80 will be 260 degrees southwest, right? Let's start tying this together. We've got our pace count. We've got our pacing beads. We've got our compass with the rotating bezel ring. We've got a note pad, a right in the rain note pad, preferably, and a pencil. And when I'm doing land nav, I just keep this on my hip in this little dump pouch here, and it's just ready to go. I can reach down in, grab it, take down my data, put it back in, easy. So, we're at location one, this little pine tree here. We're gonna shoot an azimuth down this trail and get some data and make a little map. I'm going to plot it straight between the opening of those trees. I'm rotating my bezel ring, putting the red in the shed. We have an azimuth of 236 degrees. And while I'm doing that, I'll get my back azimuth, and that is 57 degrees. Now I'll walk it, get my pace. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 20. This is what we just did. Location, azimuth, back azimuth, pace. We got limited visibility on this one, so it's going to be a shorter pace. But right up through the trees, rotating the bezel ring, putting the red in the shed, 210 degrees. Back azimuth is 30 degrees. Now we walk. One. Two, three, four, eight, nine, ten. The trail turns. We gotta shoot another asthma. This is location three. One, two, three, four, five. <laughs> we gotta turn in the trail, right? So that was a short one. It's gonna make a difference. So we got five paces. This is location four. One, two, three, four. That's how you collect your data. That's how it's done. Every time you have to turn, you have to shoot a new azimuth. You know, as you're moving along, you come across some terrain features or some resources, write some notes down besides your pace count so you're able to add those details to your map. But now that we've got all that information, how do we use it to build our map? Well, there's two ways. You can do it on paper or you can do it out in the field, right in the dirt. And that's what we're gonna look at right now. making a quick bushcraft ruler. And to do so, all I'm doing is taking the spine of my knife, laying it on the end of the stick here, which is relatively straight, rotating the blade up, marking it. I've already done this section, so from like right here, I'll just rotate, make a little, make a little groove, rotate, 
So we have a consistent unit of measure. And then you can use your knife to dig it out. If we get a little saw, it makes a nice clean cut, really fast, really easy that you can see. And then you can decide like how far you want these to be, you know, 10 meters, 20 meters, whatever the scale you're working with. But then we can use this to make a map out in the forest. And I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. To build your map out in the field, you just need a relatively flat level surface, free of any metal that's gonna interfere with your compass. And then you wanna orient yourself. I just have a couple of sticks here that I took my compass and I put it at zero degrees north, put it down on the ground to where the red is in the shed, and then I lined up the sticks so they're pointing to the north. So that's north, this is south, west, east. This is our map surface. I went out yesterday and did some nav. I did 57 data points. So we got we got some stuff to work with here. And we're going to be able to use this and show you how to triangulate where we're at and get a new route home. So just for example, I made my way to a marsh that I wanted to go to. And then on my way back from the marsh, I got off trail and got in some thick stuff. And it wasn't ideal. It wasn't the way I wanted to go. So I want to use this to calculate a new route back to this field here. So really cool. So we need our data. You need your compass, some push pins, just some sticks here. And then you need some kind of tool to measure with. So we got a little bushcraft ruler. And for our purposes today, each of these segments will be five paces. So starting off at location one, our first azimuth was 52 degrees. And I know this is gonna be in the southwest quadrant of the map. So I'll start down here. Okay, location one. We then went 52 degrees. So we'll rotate the bezel ring to 52. We'll rotate the compass to put the red in the shed. We'll lay it down. And we did five paces. Next azimuth is 32 degrees. Lay it down by the marker. Rotate the compass to put the red in the shed. And we did that one for five paces as well. Number three is 72 degrees. Rotate the bells ring to 72. Lay it down at point three. Rotate the red in the shed. We did 19 paces. 19. That's the process. You put the pin down. You find the azimuth with the compass. You lay it down flat. Orient it with the straight edge. Put the next pin down and keep on going. I'm going to fill out the map and show you what we got. So here is the first 37 points going from our start down the trail. There's a log here, so I put a log down. Right here, I got to a field that we cut straight across, back on a trail. And then here we got back into the woods. This is going up a hill, back around into some trees, and then across another field. 
and then down a hill through some woods, ending up at a marsh, which I'm able to do pretty consistently. But on my way back out, what I ended up doing was coming up through here. There's a bit of a trail, and then I got off into the woods, and it got really thick and congested over here. It wasn't ideal. And what I was trying to do was get back out to this field. So from this point, I can use my compass now and shoot an azimuth and know how to get to here without going through all of this mess. All I gotta do is lay my compass down, rotate, and put the red in the shed for an azimuth of due west, 270 degrees. And that way, the next time I'm out at that marsh, if I wanna cut back to that field, I know all I gotta do is head directly west and I'll get to where I wanna go. So I could have done that yesterday from that field, from that marsh and shot that azimuth if I would've just sat down and made this map. So very, very powerful stuff, guys. Like this can literally save your life. It can, you know, save you hours out in the bush. You know, who knows? Use your imagination, but incredibly, incredibly powerful set of skills to have. Well, there you have it. Our basic primer on land navigation. <laughs> it wasn't so basic. We actually covered quite a bit of stuff. And if you guys have any questions, just let me know down below. I'm, I'm happy to help, especially if you stuck around this long. You know, I'm sure you got something out of it. But if you got questions, just let me know. Um... You know, for years and years, I didn't know how to do much more with a with a compass than just tell the basic cardinal directions, whether it's head north, south, east, west. And then I was using my phone and the GPS for, for navigation. And a couple of times, my batteries ran out and I got stuck out outside. You know, I didn't get home till after dark and it wasn't ideal. And thankfully, I wasn't out in the backcountry and, you know, nothing came out of it, but it wasn't good. And it all could have been avoided if I simply knew how to do some of this stuff that we talked about today. It's not hard. It doesn't take, you know, it doesn't take a lot to get a handle on it. Just learning how to do your pace count, how to shoot an azimuth, and keep track of the data. And the more you do it, the more proficient you're going to get at it, the easier it's going to get. And, you know, it really opens a lot of doors as far as knowing your whereabouts outside and how to travel. So I hope you guys enjoyed. If you got any questions, like I said, just let me know down below and I'll try and help. Thanks a lot, everybody. Hope you have a wonderful day. We'll see you in the next one. Cheers.